Hey, good day, guys. It's James with Kentucky's Old Pass, and I'm cooking groundhog stew. I don't know if you guys ever had any groundhog, but it's good, and it's definitely a staple of the old Appalachians. And so, I'm in Western Kentucky this weekend at a primitive event. If you can see by the cabin behind us, this is a cabin that uh, our organization owns, and it was built in the 1700s. The uh, fireplace in it has actually got 17 and 87. Uh, scratched into the rock of the fireplace was actually drawn into it when it was poured and so it's really cool to stay down here but uh, we're having a cook off this evening and so I've decided to make groundhog stew and I'm gonna make some Johnny cakes that are wild got some fresh cornmeal and we're gonna make some Johnny cakes to go with our groundhog stew but uh, this morning we've been out shooting flintlocks we've had uh, shooting competition this morning and I didn't win but I had a lot of fun and a lot of good shooters and so I may go try to kill some squirrels this evening but I want to talk to you guys just a minute about taking care of the things that's left behind for you this pod actually belonged to my great grandmother Florrie Davison and so I am very tickled to own it and use it and I've got another pot uh, it's got a small hole in it but it belonged to another great grandmother of mine and it was actually probably made in the 1800s and so I have many things that belong to grandparents and, and ancestors, and I love owning those things because to me that tells a story. It's a piece of history, and it's a story piece that's been left behind by the person that can't tell you the story, but it leaves you to imagine or guess what went on with that piece in history. And so I love owning stuff like that. I've got crosscut saws and froes and different things that belong to grandparents and ancestors. And so I enjoy using those. But this groundhog stew, uh, we've got some beef broth and we've got taters and onions and some carrots and celery. And uh, I'm going to add a little seasoned flour in it, make a little gravy on it this evening. But uh, it's going to be really good. And uh, groundhogs was something that uh, people of Appalachia grew up eating. I grew up eating them. I still eat them. Uh, the hides were used to make shoestrings for boots. And so. Uh, they were a multi-purpose animal actually. Groundhog grease was actually used in some uh, liniments for cold medicine and stuff as I've been told. And so uh, a good sized groundhog, uh, I boned this one out and there's probably a pound and a half of meat, a pound of meat out of a good sized groundhog and that's a lot of meat, just straight meat. And it's just good protein and groundhogs only eat vegetables. And so I think it's a good clean meat, you may not think so but I do. Uh, I know a lot of people that's eat them and everybody that I know eats them, likes them. Uh, they've got somewhat of a beef taste, but it's not just straight beef. It's got a little bit of a wild beef taste to it. But uh, made up in this stew, uh, I would imagine if I fed this to you, you wouldn't know no different than if it was a beef stew. So we're going to enjoy this this evening. But I want you guys to remember to enjoy the things that's left behind to you, just like my grandmother's old pot. Anything else you may own that belonged to somebody in the past, and just sit and imagine what went around, what uh, went on, where that thing was used, maybe a story that was behind there. And so I like doing that. And so you guys take care of the things left behind to you, and we're going to eat some stew. So thank you guys.